I was originally going to end the Masking 101 series by showing you how to make painterly edges on your masks, but I just couldn't wait any longer to show you guys this amazing concept. In this video, I'll conclude my intro to masks by revealing their true power, replacing your eraser tool. And as a side note, if you hear birds in the background, I apologize for that. I work from home and it's spring now, so I can't avoid it. So the concept here is pretty abstract if you're coming from traditional media. Now stick with me though, because the result is nothing short of mind blowing. So in the first two parts of the video, you might remember that a simple mask can be made by making a marquee, clicking the add layer mask button. And then what you get is a little thumbnail on your layer stack that represents that mask with black and with white. Black's what's covered up, White's what you can see. Well, what if I told you that you're not limited to black and white, that you can use gray as well, any kind of gray? Well, all of a sudden, the masking tape metaphor is pretty much thrown out. Instead, you've got futuristic masking tape, where parts of your layer can either be totally hidden, totally revealed, or anywhere in between. And the really powerful part is that you can manage all of this with the brush tool. So instead of telling you anymore, I'm gonna show you how this works because it's very, very cool. So I've added a checkerboard in the background just so what I'm doing is a little more visible so you can see exactly how cool this mask is. So before, I would start by making a marquee, turning it into a mask. This time, I'm just gonna have nothing selected and click the add mask button. So the thumbnail that you're left with is pure white. So that means that at this point, nothing is masked. Well, if I click on the actual white thumbnail, now my color swatches switch to white and black. This means that I'm painting masking tape. I'm not using the brush tool anymore. I'm actually laying down liquid masking tape. So I'll switch to black and I'll paint. And what happens is I hide that part of the image. So it's kind of like the eraser tool, right? Well, here's where it's not. If I switch to white, I can bring it back. This is incredible. If you're using a real eraser on real paper and you erase something, and then maybe 10 minutes later realized, oh, I wish I had that back, you are out of luck. With a mask in Photoshop, you can use paint to hide things and bring them back. And the beautiful part is you can have them halfway in between. So if I were to switch my brush to the soft round, pick a gray color, which is halfway transparent in the mask, and I paint in here, look at that transition. But then again, if I wanna bring a little bit back, switch to white. Maybe I want to use some crazy custom brush so I can re reveal parts of the image with this brush that kind of looks like snow. So I'm not doing anything that's destructive. I can hide the mask at any point and have the entire image back. But I can play in this mask and really work on these transitions. So at this point, you might be wondering, well, that's really wild and really abstract, but how do I use that in the painting? Well, one thing that it's really, really nice for is when you have an object that's rendered like this reflective purple ball, and then you wanna add some different surface qualities to it, but you're not sure exactly how you want it to look. So here I've got the base ball, I've got a secondary material, and then I've got panel borders, or surface detail. And those are each on their own layer, and we wanna kinda of mix and match them. Well, I could just lower the overall opacity of one until I get it to a place I like, or I could use the eraser tool to kind of remove bits of a layer, but that's not very flexible. That's destructive to use the eraser tool. So here, I'll start with this secondary material, the teal, I'll make an empty layer mask, and now I'll start to paint bits of it away. So I'll use black 
and I'm painting in the layer thumbnail, so I'm not actually altering the layer. I'm just changing what is masked. Maybe I'll use the soft round to sort of hide it slowly. Then maybe I'll use the white and bring it back again with a sort of textural brush. Okay, it's kind of interesting. Well, I'll leave that for now. And now I'll make another mask on the panel borders or the surface detailing layer. So I'll make an empty mask. And here I'm using the hard round and I'm just gonna drop those back a bit. You know, maybe I want gaps where they're completely hidden. And I can try out, see what that looks like. Uh, maybe that looks too much like a dotted line. I don't really like that. Well, I can get the white and bring it right back. So it's this push and pull that you can do with a mask that is unlike anything you've ever done before. It allows you to really experiment and in a non-destructive way. And then when you're happy with everything, you can flatten it down if you want. But having the mask there is a great way to really play with these transitions. So hopefully that wasn't too abstract for you and you've learned a little bit more about what masks can do in your painting. I'm sure some of you were just waiting for this last topic to come out and have been wondering why I haven't gotten to it yet. Well, if that's you, please tell me more in the comments. I'd really like to hear how it is that you use these masks to control your painting. And like always, I'm always looking for new content for the next videos. So if you've got any questions, leave them in the comments. Thanks for watching.